Hi y'all and welcome to The Well Educated Artist. Today we are going to bloom paint, but we're going to be using something that you don't normally think of when you bloom paint, and that is acrylic inks. Now you may not be familiar with acrylic inks. You may be familiar with India ink or alcohol ink or even watercolor inks, but you may not be familiar with these, and they are acrylic inks. Now, this is probably my favorite brand of acrylic ink, I will have to say. It's the Abstract Acrylic Ink from Sennelier. I love it, I like how it works, I like what it does and the effects that you get. But many people make it. Uh, Liquitex, of course, makes one. And so does De La Rani, and even Amsterdam makes one. So if you're familiar with bloom paints, you're more than likely familiar with Amsterdam paints. And this is Titanium White Acrylic Ink. So, you can get any kind of brand, I just prefer this one. I have not worked a lot with Amsterdam, so I can't say how much I like it or not. Uh, so um, if you like Amsterdam acrylic ink, let me know in the comments below or what your favorite acrylic ink is. Now, what is special about acrylic inks? Well, the colors, they are so vibrant and they add something to a bloom painting. They are also very easy to move around. They are so fluid, they are just another medium for fluid art. So let's get started and I'll show you how I'm going to integrate them into my bloom painting. I will be working with some traditional bloom paints that are mixed with Beer 8300 and Joe Sonia varnish. And uh, these are the colors I'm going to be working with. You've probably seen me work with many of these colors before. From Color Art, we have Ginger Peach and Plumeria, and from their Blingit line, my favorite Abalone Shell. And then there are two May Spring colors, which are Peach Gold and Pure Copper that I use quite a lot. So those are what I'm going to use, and I also have some custom greens that I may introduce later, since I am going to be doing a flower. So. We're going to start our bloom painting just like we would normally do. I'm going to be using Color Police Antique White and Satin, which is a Walmart house paint for my pillow paint today. I'm just going to go ahead and get that laid down, and then we'll get started putting down our bloom paints and our acrylic inks. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our bloom paint down. You may find that the way I'm putting it down is a little strange. It just has to do with the configuration that I want. It's not gonna be the super traditional bloom. We're not going to be using any cell activator. So let me go ahead and start with my plumeria. And I'm going to just be dotting some of my colors. I love this orange. It is actually ginger peach and it has so much shine to it. An incredible amount of shine. So if you're not used to using pigments, they really can add so much to your painting. You can of course use traditional paints in this, absolutely, but pigments are just something else. They really add life to your blooms. And sparkle, if you love sparkle. And I love it, so you will always see me use things like abalone shell, which has so much sparkle in it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start getting down our inks. I'm gonna be starting with magenta, and I'm going to be just dotting this. I'm going to dot it both here and outside of where I put down my bloom paint. I'm going to try to work as quickly as I can because, as you can see, my bloom paint is spreading pretty quickly. My inks will not spread until I blow them. They are very fluid. They are really going to move. You actually have to be careful or you can actually blow them right off of whatever surface you're working on. They can go absolutely everywhere. 
I may begin with my airbrush, just the air, no paint in there, because sometimes it gets difficult for me to do a lot of blowing. I get lightheaded, and this one is going to take a little bit of blowing. So if you have a little air blower, you can definitely use that. You know, you're probably thinking, well, she's full of hot air because she talks so much, she should be able to blow like that. But uh, yeah, no, generally makes me lightheaded. Okay. I'm adding just a little bit of the white Amsterdam since I don't use it very often. Some of these inks can even be used as cell activators. Uh, it depends on the brand. Some work better than others. Some you get some cells, some you won't. So let's go ahead and start blowing. I'm a little concerned I might not have enough ink up top, but the good news is I can always add some ink. So I'm going to, to stay with just this amount of ink and this amount of paint for now. So this is my little airbrush here, just the air today. Make sure it's working. Makes a horrible noise, but let's see what we can do here. And not blow my paint everywhere. Look at those colors. That's what I was trying to say, that the colors in these abstract inks, colors are absolutely stunning. Uh, in these inks. They are so vivid and so bright. So I'm starting with my inks. And now I'm going to blow. And I'm seeing what I was afraid of, not having enough ink here. So let me go ahead and stop what I'm doing right now. Sometimes you just know. You just know you're going to have an issue. So my ink has also decided it's going to uh, go rogue here. I'm going to add just a little bit of ink to up here. I don't have to. It's just it's what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. I like how these mix together. Let's see. To be very careful now. I'm actually going to blow it a couple of different directions until I can get it. There we go. And I'm going to blow that with my mouth because I just know I will need to. I'm going to stop right there and start blowing with my mouth because I know that I'm going to need more control than I can get with my airbrush. And I will move my camera for you. There we go. Now let's start blowing here. So what you're gonna see, and I can even move this slide out, is that the inks have combined, and I will get you a close up. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is add a stem using some of my green paint. And I'm just gonna use a popsicle stick for this. So you can see what I'm going for here. going to use another color of green. 
These are just blue paint, usually ones that I custom mix. The green is always hard for me. It's like I never can find the color that I want. So I end up making my own color. And the reason I'm not going to be using my green ink is that I need more control. And I obviously will not have a lot of control. The inks are very fluid. Okay. So just a tiny bit bigger right there. And there we are. So let me get you a close up. And here it is. For me, this looks like a carnation. You can see all of the sparkle and shine. If I move the light out, you probably won't see that, but you'll be able to see the beautiful colors. They very much are so vibrant and they're watercolor-like. And you notice that it didn't use any red, but we have it reading red, the magenta combined, and has it reading red. Look at that, look at all of that shine. That is the great thing about combining the two. You do get the shine. There, are, there is some lacing, and that really did come from that Amsterdam white. So yeah, the Amsterdam white is acting kind of like a cell activator there. So what do you think about this combination of acrylic inks and bloom paint? So next time you're looking for some spice for your bloom painting, just check out some acrylic inks. Let me know what you think in the comments below and thanks for watching. Till next time, bye now.